Ah, uh, Bob, Bob, hi Bob, says, as a maker, I feel a compulsion to hoard every piece of material that may be useful eventually somewhere. Oh, I feel you, man. Scraps of metal, wood, leather, I want it all, no matter how trivial. Yeah, I really, really feel you on that one. Um, how do you go about deciding whether or not to keep a piece of material in an effective way? This is a terrific question. Um, and the answer is, again, it's a process, but the process involves really investigating and seeing what you are using. For instance, last year, I looked at my wood storage back here and I realized that there's this, that middle band of all the little cubbies were just, as they currently are, packed with scraps. Not in a highly organized manner either, somewhat organized manner. But I was looking at those scraps and I was thinking, I keep saving these long, thin cuts of quarter inch, half inch, eighth inch plywood, thinking, you know, well, I could use this later. And then when I go looking for plywood of the right length, those aren't the things I grab for. And so I had to come to a clarity that about every three or four months, I have to throw out a whole bunch of wood material. Anything smaller than this gets the boot. I pulled this piece out as a demonstrable, like anything smaller than this, anything thinner, anything shorter. Uh, the only, the only, uh, 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 the only thing that stays, even if it's smaller than this, is circles. I never throw out circles of any kind. Yeah, I store every circle that I can find. Um, with chunks of Delrin, I do the same thing. Um, look, one of the nice things about being merciless with your scraps is that you end up with buckets of scraps that you can pass on to other makers. Um, Industrial Light and Magic used some expensive modeling materials uh, and they bought them in big chunks for hundreds of dollars and then they made smaller chunks and they threw out the tiny chunks. But all of us model makers at ILM got our start with Renshape and the expensive modeling materials by pulling that stuff out of the garbage. Um, uh, you know, I make plywood regularly available in the tested offices and also other, other materials that I use that I'm no longer needing the cutoffs of. Um, Rod material, I save almost everything. Like round, hex, square, uh, bar, flat bar, I save almost all of it. And then I have, you, the answer to every single one of these questions is always, it's a process. So like, I'll show you one of my organizational drawers. Hold on just a sec. Um, oh, so here is Delrin chunks, plastic chunks. And for the most part, everything here is great. That one I can toss. Um, you know, absolutely, every piece here is still quite usable, still quite useful. Um, sometimes at the end of a gig, I will do something like, I'll take a piece like this with all this crap on it, and I'll just slice it on the bandsaw to be generally square. Um, that's a questionable piece, because it's got so many marks on it. But, um, ugh, nylon. Freaking hate nylon. Um, these are these ones vex me. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm. <laughs> Sometimes you have to process your scraps. This is really true. Sometimes you've got to process your scraps. You've got to take a scrap like this, toss it on the table saw, and make a cut. Um, something like this. Yeah, it'd be nice to have. You never need a crap ton of this stuff. You just need a reasonable amount, oh, sorry, I. I never need a crap ton of that stuff. I just need like a reasonable amount. So this bin, I went through this bin over COVID. Uh, so it's relatively, uh, it's relatively freshly rated. That, that, am I, am I really ever gonna need that thing? I don't think so. Ooh, I made it. All right, let's put this back. <clears throat> All right, let's see here. Um, ooh, oh, there we go. Oh. <laughs> the panel is so worn out, the plug connector is just not gonna, ah. All right, you get less light out of me now. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, Veronica Swearens says, what is your favorite way to organize and store your completed cosplays? Wigs, costumes, props, etc." cetera. Um, the general method is I have these wardrobes that are uh, linen with a clear vinyl front and a zipper up the front. Uh, and I have uh, about a hundred costumes stored on Z racks, like professional clothing racks in storage. And each bag houses all of the parts of all of the attempts at that costume. So the Dr. Strange costume I just got from Chad Evett, um, there's like two interim Dr. Strange costumes that are still in that wardrobe. You know, if a friend of mine says they're interested in cosplaying as Strange, I'll send them some of those pieces. I did that to Will Wheaton when he wanted to do Kylo Ren. Um, <clears throat> but my preferred way to store costumes is always on a mannequin. I want to see all of them. If I, if I could wave a magic wand, I'd have a long room, an airplane hanger with every costume sitting on a mannequin. That would be my dream, my dream come true. Next best would be a gallery next door to my shop in which the costumes sort of were on a revolving show. That would be also awesome. Um, there are times I want to see all the spacesuits in one place. There are times I want to see all the suits of armor in one place. Right now it's spacesuit heavy and the spacesuits are all kind of sitting in a bundle. But it's the least efficient way to store stuff. I've still got my Iron Man Mark I up on a stand because I can't stop staring at it. Um, so the answer is, uh, my favorite way is on a mannequin. My preferred method is in a wardrobe. However, there are also costumes like the Iron Man Mark II that'll never fit in a wardrobe. And so then they need things like kind of lockers or, or duffel bags or, uh, I mean, frankly, when I start to think about stuff like that, like my Doctor Strange, I think Doctor Strange, his whole outfit should be in an ancient, gigantic leather suitcase with buckles and travel stickers all over it, right? Like that speaks to me. Many years ago, um, there I went to a flea market in London. This is in the, in the late '80s, um, and it was uh, it was like miles and miles of wandering through alleys and streets. I can't remember the name of this flea market, but God, it was amazing and wow, the Brits really loved their leather suitcases and boy, they loved putting stickers on them because there were just hundreds of these gorgeous old leather suitcases, all beautifully patinaed with their travel stickers from all over the world. Um, I've been trolling eBay for an extra large one for my Doctor Strange costume. Um, because that's the other thing that I like to do is I like to put my costumes into a vessel that speaks to the origin of that costume. So uh, my, my Captain America Winter Soldier is in a tactical aluminum box that I built. And it's what I picture it is in the back of that van in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Marvel film when he says, all right, everyone, let's suit up. And he walks to the back of the van. I thought, what is this suit in? What does it look like? And I know you see it in a duffel bag when the girl brings Cap his suit, but duffel bag's not it for me. No, it's gotta be in a tactical case. Uh, <sighs> Vicky Bly says, how often do you find yourself wanting to remake organizers? A lot, a lot. I don't, yeah, a lot. I mean, I'm currently thinking about redoing all of the stands for the Sortimo cases. It's an expensive and time consuming process because the main thing I want yeah. Oh, here's the thing. This is a sort of case. This is their tea box with two X's size. This is my favorite organizer in the world. Um, they've got these. They've got drawer slide catches on the on the sides. So, what I currently have is when I pull the sort of out, I have to put it somewhere to go and get something out of it. What I want is drawer slides. But what I have are how many of these? I have 50 of these guys. That's a hundred drawer slides. It's a lot of dough. Uh, it's, it's, a fairly, it's, a fa it's a fairly big capital expenditure for the cave. Uh, and then once I have them, I've got to build the cabinets that hold them all. It's a thing. Um, 
I don't think there's anything in here I haven't rebuilt twice or re rejiggered at least twice. Um, and again, there's nothing is static. Nothing stays the same. I recently put the glue cart out, out here. I pulled it out of the shop because I just didn't use it enough. Uh, and it's been great, but it's sitting out there in the main, in the pool table area. And it's just sort of hogging up space and oxygen and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it. Uh, I may rebuild the entire top of that case and I may rebuild the top of the paint case and I may rebuild the top of the electronics case. All three builds that I did on tested. Uh, and I thought I was solving a problem, but over the years I've seen, I've learned how I haven't solved all of the problems I was hoping to solve with that. Um, so a lot of times it's about like working with an imperfect situation until I'm angry enough about it to actually fix it and solve the problem. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects. Questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams and we have some members only videos, including the Adam real time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.